Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, here's a reminder about gasoline. If you've been putting off buying your first tank full of Chevron Supreme, how about making a date soon with the gas that gives you all eight high-performance qualities? After all, engines love Chevron Supreme's all-around balance and starting, warm-up, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, mileage, power, acceleration, and area blending. For Valentine's Day or any day, say it with Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Cortez Island, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, if conditions were normal, I doubt if I would be writing to you for help. Ordinarily, I can handle the situation quite well. In this case, however, I am powerless to do anything. As a matter of fact, I cannot even leave my own house. And this matter involves a certain amount of action. Please forgive me if I seem vague. And please call on me as soon as possible. It may already be too late. Signed, Mrs. Alice Jensen. Mr. Valentine, I suppose you've heard of Clyde Jensen. The explorer? Explorer, anthropologist. Adventurer, my husband. We always work together until now. He's away? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks, he's away, and I, I'm so worried. I have a feeling that something has happened. I want you to find him. Oh, well, just where is your husband, Mrs. Jensen? That's what you're to find out. I only know where he started for. Mm -hmm. And where's that? I'll show you. Uh, here. Uh, do you know what that is? Well, sure. It's a sort of crudely drawn map. It's a copy. Clyde has the original, which is about as crude. But uh, what's it a map of, Mrs. Jensen? It looks like an island. You're quite right, my dear. It is. Cortez Island, to be exact. Oh, yeah. Just off the coast here. Supposed to be a fisherman's paradise or something. My husband didn't go there to fish, however. Uh, you see, uh, he came into possession of some very old papers. And among them was the original of this map. But why would that interest him? If you'll notice carefully, um, here, it indicates a place where pirate loot is supposed to have been cached away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Looks like a cave. That's right. Clyde was determined to go over and try to find it. Why, he left over a week ago. And you haven't heard from him since? Not a word. There's no regular boat service to the island and no communication from there. But the water taxis call in every day or so to carry fishermen and pick up the mail... So I, uh, I should have had some word. And uh, you think perhaps he's ill or had an accident? Why, at this point, I don't think anything, Mr. Valentine. I only know that my husband said he would write me in two or three days if he wasn't back by then. Uh-huh. Any place to stay over on Cortez Island, Mrs. Jensen? Uh, there's a very small hotel, I understand. He was planning to stop there. Oh, um, you'd better take the map. Mrs. Jensen, what makes you think something might have happened to him? Maybe he's been busy. I only know, Miss Brooks, when people are looking for buried treasure, anything can happen. Hey, folks. Yeah? Here she is, Cortez Island. Face the dock. Yeah, so I see. Hope it stands up until we get ashore. Yeah, well, not as rickety as she looks. That's a reassuring thought. Hey, uh, mister. Well? None of my business, but uh, dames don't come over here very much. Kind of a rough life, you know. Oh, that's all right. 
My brother and I have roughed it a lot together. Why, Brooksy? I would have said my husband, but that might lead to complications. I'll say. Well, there have been funny things going on around here lately. Yeah? What kind of funny things? Uh, I don't know. Nothing you can put your finger on. I brought a few people over who didn't look like they was going to fish. You, just like you don't. Oh, yes? The best fishermen don't wear hats with flies stuck in the brim, you know. Yeah, that's right. And people who come here don't fish with flies anyway, lady. Oh, well, none of my business. Hey, friend, did you by any chance bring over a man named Jensen a little over a week ago? Look, fella, did I ask you your name? Well, no, but... So that's the way it is. I don't ask nobody what your name is. Maybe I brought Ike Walton. I don't know. I see what you mean. Okay, there you are. Hop out. Oh, um, um, when will you be back? Why do I know, lady? I just work for somebody. When we got some passengers, some mail, maybe tomorrow, maybe next day, next week. Good thing we like to fish, Angel. By the way, where's the hotel? You're looking right at it, Missy. That dump over there. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a nice trip anyway. And uh, give us a holler when you come back. Much like the Biltmore. Uh, uh, but charming. Yeah, and deserted. Hey, anybody here? I guess they've all gone fishing. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm coming. What do you want? Oh, hello. Are you the manager here? Yeah, you might call it that. I'm the owner. Why? Well, we came over for some fishing. You got a couple of rooms for us? Huh? You and the lady, huh? Eh? Yeah, that's right. We'll need two rooms. You ain't married? Not yet. Mm. Yeah, I guess I can dig up a couple of rooms for you. But uh, I don't see your boat out there. How you figure to fish? Why? Isn't the shore fishing any good here? Matter of fact, I understood Oh, that... sure. Get a few sea bass, halibut, sharks. Uh, motor boats broke down, so you can't use it. A little rowboat tied up at a pier. You could use that. Oh, that's all right. We'll have fun just fishing off the rocks. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, yeah? you have somebody here by the name of Clyde Jensen? Jensen? Uh, Jensen? Nope. Never heard of a man by that name. We understood he came over here to fish. I said I never heard of him. I know all the people that come over here. Oh, sure, naturally. Well, we don't know the gentleman anyway. Just heard through some people that he'd come here. Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, I'll have the old lady get your rooms ready. Sit down. I'll be right back. George. Yeah, Brooksy? This is very strange. I can't understand why Pardon me. Mm. Oh, hello. I didn't see you. I know. I just came in. Happened to overhear what you were saying to Cork. Cork? Yeah, Cork Roman, the owner of this place. Old pig leg. Oh, yeah. Heard you talking about uh, Clyde Jensen. Well, yeah, that's right. You uh, don't know the man by sight, huh? Uh, no. No, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I figured that way. What do you mean by that? Because you see, I'm Clyde Jensen. You... You are? That's right. But Mr. Roman said he didn't know anybody. Of course not. If I told him my right name, they'd all figure why I'm here. Get in my hair. They know me as Harry Frazier. Oh, sure, I get it. Yes, you must have come over because somebody wanted to know about me, huh? Well, yes, Mr. Jensen. Your wife, she was worried. <laughs> sure, I can understand. I haven't written her. Because they'd all suspect who I am. Oh, well, I'm sure she'll be relieved to know. Of course she will, and I'm glad you came. Now, when you get back, just tell her everything's all right with me, will you? Why, sure. Tell her I've got a few more days' work to do, and then I'll be home. I haven't quite finished. You uh, new people just come over? Shh, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, your rooms are ready. Hello, Mr. Fraser. Oh, thanks. Uh, we'd better register. My name's Valentine, and this is Miss Brooks. I ain't got no register. Names don't mean much around here. I'm Mary Roman, Cork's wife. Oh, how do you do? Not so good. I'm tired. I'm always tired. Well, it's the first and second rooms back down the hall when you're ready to go, Tom. Okay, thanks. Well, Brooksy, looks like our mission over here is accomplished. Now all we have to do is get back to the mainland. That's right, and please tell my wife not to worry or to be a boat back tomorrow. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've got some writing to do in my room. Yeah, okay. And we'd better make use of our fishing equipment, Angel. Have a look around the island. By the way, have any luck yet, Mr. Chen? Uh, Fraser? 
Within a few days, I'll really get something big. Okay, here we are, Brooksy. We'll stow the fishing tackle over behind these rocks. Shelling, aren't we going to fish? No, not just yet. Going to do a little exploring first. What do you mean? Look at this. Right over here. What? Oh, oh George, it's the king. Yeah, the map was pretty accurate. Come on, let's go in. All right. This is sort of exciting, isn't it? It'd be more exciting if there really were some buried treasure in here. Aren't you romanticizing a little, darling? Sure. Maybe Jensen is, too. He seems like a practical enough guy, though. It's good I brought the flashlight along. It's dark in here. It's creepy, too. I think I'd rather have Mr. Jensen do the exploring. We might catch some fish, you know. That's possible. We'll try later. Hey, the walls are dry in here. Oh, she never gets up this far. Hey, wait a minute. What? What's the matter? Yeah, somebody dropped it. Yeah, it is a wallet. Over here, almost hidden by a big rock. Yeah. Probably be glad to get it back. It must be Mr. Jensen's, don't you think? Yeah, pretty likely. Here, hold the flashlight, will you? I'll have a look. Maybe some identification. He shouldn't be so careless. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Jensen's, all right. He has a driver's license. Home address. Clyde Jensen. Age, height, weight. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter, George? Something's phony here. Remember the guy who said he was Jensen and calls himself Harry Fraser? Yes, of course. I'd say he weighs around 200 pounds, six foot tall at least. So what? So that character doesn't have to be Jensen at all. Now listen to this. Five feet six, weight 136, light brown hair. He had dark hair, almost black. You're so right. Maybe Mrs. Jensen had reason to be worried about her husband. George, what can we do? Why well, you all be so stupid? Quiet, what Brooksy. Here comes come somebody. Enough. I'm a short Vanelli. Yeah, shut up. I had trouble starting the outboard on a dinghy. Quick, Angel, we got to get back farther in the cave. Keep it quiet. Yes, George. What'd you do with Jensen? Nothing yet. He, he, he won't try to get off the ship. It's a long swim to the shore. Besides, I got him tied. There's a vent in the wall. Duck behind it, Angel. Yeah. You mean you're not going to dump him overboard? What's the use? As soon as we get the stuff ashore and in a cave here, we'll figure that. Sure. It's got to be tomorrow night at the latest. Some guy and a girl come over here looking for Jensen. Yeah? What did you do? Posed as Jensen myself. <laughs> but they didn't know him. But that's why we got to work fast with the stuff. Yeah, yeah. High tide comes in at twelve. Hey, you smell something? No. What? It's like per, you know perfume, woman's perfume. Perfume? Yeah. Hi, you're nuts, Tanali. No. Now fix this radio transmitter. Get it working again. It's the only way I've got to keep in touch with you out there on the ship. Yeah, okay, Harry. Really. And make it snappy. I wouldn't want these snoops from the mainland to catch us in here. We just might have to bump them off. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. American motorists have to call for emergency service because of battery failures 10 million times a year. Yet most of these failures need never happen. You can escape any part of this annoying trouble by having your battery serviced regularly by the car savers at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. Car savers make it their business to take regular care of your battery. They give it a periodic cell-by-cell check and see that it's kept filled with water. Car savers clean the terminals and coat them with a corrosion resistant. And, of course, they test your battery to be sure it's capable of dependable starting. And say, that's another part of Car Savers' all-round battery service. If your battery should need recharging, Car Savers are equipped to handle the job. They'll do their darndest to keep your battery young and full of pep. So don't forget, friends, over 10 million car failures a year are due to battery trouble which means that the difference between comfort and discomfort depends on getting your car to start. If you'd rather be safe than sorry, then stop in soon for complete battery service at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. 
It seems like a pleasant enough assignment being sent to a little island three miles out in the Pacific to find a man who's searching for buried treasure. But just when you think you've located the object of your search, you discover that he's not only a phony, but also the captor of your client's husband. If your name is George Valentine and you happen to be in a spooky cave on the island holding Brooksy's hand, you wait motionless for long minutes until... Okay... That's it, Harry. It works all right now, eh, Tonelli? Oh, sure. Loose correction. That's, you know, con- connection all with right. that. So. Now, let's get out of here. Now, listen to me. Yeah? You get in that motor dinghy and head back out to the boat. You understand? Sure, Harry. Sure, yeah. Get out there and sit tight. That's all you have to do, except... Yeah? Tune in your radio every hour on the hour. Huh? Things are getting too hot. I might need you. Yeah, sure, Harry. And if I send for you, don't take all night. Okay. Hey, you think those two drinks know no, anything, Harry? Yet, but they might catch on. Oh, George, that was too close. Yeah, I know. We'd better not get in that spot again. All right, they've gone now. Come on. Darling, do you think it's safe to go out so soon? We're not going to yet. Well, then what? I want to have a look at this outfit. We didn't see it when we came in. What, the radio thing? Yeah, sure. Need little transmitter and receiver. But that can't do us any good, can it? Might. One thing's certain. We need help. Maybe this will get it for us. You mean you know something about those gadgets? Sure. I had to learn about them in the Army. You see, there's no communication between here and the mainland. Oh. You think you might call somebody on this? Why not? After all, a transmitter is... Uh-uh. What's the matter? Won't help. Sealed wavelength. Whatever that means. Well, it means, Angel, that this radio outfit can send and receive on only one frequency, which would be the one used by that boat they were talking about. Where they have Mr. Jensen? Right. Well, that's a washout. For now, at least. So, let's get out of here. George. Yeah. Suppose they haven't gone away yet. My guess is they have. Yeah, sure. Look out there. What, that boat? Dingy with an outboard motor heading straight out. That'd be Tonelli following orders. Well, at least he's out of the way. Yeah, and look beyond the direction he's heading. What do you see? Where? There. Oh, there's a bigger boat out there. Sure. Loaded with something they want to get into this country illegally. Also, Clyde Jensen, whom they don't want to get in. But where's the other one? That Harry? Right up there on the path to the hotel. Yeah. You can recognize him from the back. Well, that tells us what to do. It does? What? We're going fishing. Fishing? That's right. Now's the time we need an alibi. Let's get that tackle out from behind the rocks and go to work. Well, Mr. Valentine, Miss Brooks, been doing some fishing, eh? Oh, hello, Mr. Uh, Fraser. Yeah, we had a try at it. Not much luck today, though. Plain you had some. Mm, nice one. What is it? It's a, an uh, ocean perch. Oh, I see. Good eating? Pretty fair. Bet you'd like to send a few of these back to Mrs. Jensen when we go. Uh, no, she doesn't care much for fish. Oh, Mr. Roman. Yeah, what is it, lady? Did we get back in time to have this fish cooked for our dinner? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure, I guess so. My wife can snap out of it long enough. Hey, Mary. I don't like to put it in any trouble, but... Ah, uh, that size fish ain't no trouble. Yeah, Court, you call me? Sure, come here. All right. Yeah. Mary's a slow-moving character. Good cook, though. Well, that's good. Well, uh, see you at dinner, Mr. Fraser. Yeah, yeah, sure. See you later. Well, what do you want? Yeah, take this fish the people caught. They want it for their dinner. Hmm. Not the best you could do? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Well, all right. Come on, Cork. Need some help in the kitchen. Yeah, all right, Mary. Hey, see, as far as these people are concerned, we've just been fishing. Is that a help? And if so, how? Gives me some time without being suspected. Time to do what? Brooksy, some time after dinner. Say, right on the hour of eight, I'm going back to that cave and make a very important radio call. But I thought you said it could only send to that one boat. That's exactly the call I'm going to make. Oh. Well, I don't quite follow you. I'm going, too. I don't think you'd better. Well, I do. You let me know when you're ready to go. You got the set turned on? Yeah, everything seems to be okay. Now, what time have you got? Oh, well, wait till I get my watch in the light of the flash. It's just, uh, almost exactly 8 o'clock. Good, good. I'll turn on the mic and give it a try. George, you'll get that to Nellie first. That's what I intend to do. All right, quiet. Hello. Hello. Tonelli. Hello. Tonelli. Come in. Yeah, hello. What is... 
Harry, Tanelli. Now listen to me. I need your help. Things are getting hot over here. Yes? What happened? Don't be dumb. You know I can't tell you on this thing. Yeah, you could... Hey, you sure this is Harry? Certainly. Who else could it be? Now, get over to the island as fast as you can. Yeah, okay, Harry. Bring your boat in by the cave and meet me in here, understand? Sure. Let me be. Just you. And make it snappy. Be right there. Well, Angel, that worked all right. Yes, but why do you want Tanelli to come ashore? And what are you going to do? Tanelli will land the dinghy right out here by the cave. When he does, I'll be way back there by the pier in that little rowboat Cork told us about. Oh, where are we going in it? We're not going anywhere. After he comes ashore, you're going to do one more thing, then go back to your room. I'm going to row out to the big boat and find Jensen. But as soon as he gets here, Tanelli will find out that that call was a fake. Sure, and he and Fraser will come tearing back to the boat. But in the meantime, I think I can get things pretty well under control. Well, I hope so. All right, no time to lose. i got to be ready to take off on that rowboat. Hello. Ahoy there. Who's aboard? Hello. Anybody aboard? Hello. Who's that? Hey, that you, Jensen? Yes. Yes. Who is it? I can't get away. Okay, I'll come to you then. Where are you, Jensen? Call out. Right here. In the cabin. Okay. Well, got you tied up, huh? They're taking no chances, are they? Uh, who are you? My name's Valentine. Your wife sent me to find you, Mr. Jensen. Oh, hell, but it's no use, Valentine. He'll be back here in a few minutes. Now, wait a minute. I'll get these ropes loose so you can help me. Uh, well, thanks. But... Why, why are they holding you, Mr. Jensen? You find out something crooked they're doing? Yes, yes. They, they caught me in the cave on the island. I'd, I'd overheard them. They're bringing in a lot of dope. Yeah, so that's it. That's what I thought. Okay, now, if we can start the engine and get this boat underway before they get back here... No, that's, that's impossible, Valentine. That Captain Tonelli always locks the ignition. He's got the key with him. Oh, better forget that, then. Unless... Well, how'd you come out? Uh, can't we go back the same way? Wouldn't be safe in that little rowboat. They'd spot us for sure. Our lives wouldn't be worth a nickel. But we'll have to take that chance. Hey, wait a minute. I got a better idea. And if I remember my mechanics well enough... Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and save our skins and also turn over a load of illicit stuff to the proper parties. Now, come on over here and give me a hand. Okay, she's in there. Now, I'll do the talking. Yeah, all right, Harry. George, you... Oh... Yeah, hello, Miss Brooks. What? What do you want? I just knocked on your boyfriend's door. Didn't get an answer. He isn't in. Oh, but he must be. I said he isn't. Now, where is he? Well, I don't know. He said he might take a little walk outside, get some air. Oh, yeah? You know anything about a radio message that was sent out a while ago? Radio message? Well, no. How would anybody on this island... She's say... lying Sure Harry. she is. So we'll have to find Valentine ourselves. But I don't understand. You will. Tanelli. Yeah? Get the key from inside the door. Lock her in from the outside. Okay. And tell Cork and Mary to keep an eye on her. Mm -hmm. We'll finish it later. I got a pretty good idea where Valentine is. And I don't think he'll be very glad to see us. <laughs> Board, all right. There's the rowboat he came out in. Yeah. What are you figuring us to do, Harry? Get rid of him, of course. Get the stop of shore and then clear out. The boss will have it picked up. What about the girl? We'll take care of her when the time comes. Okay, get aboard. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Fraser and Captain Tonelli, what took you so long? It's kind of hard to start an outboard motor when somebody's ripped the wire off the ignition. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that. Me? How could I? I've been out here talking to the man you said you were. Look, Harry, we're wasting time. Let's do it and get going. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, let's have your ignition keys, Tanelli. Harry's got a gun. Yeah, I know. So have I. Grab the old guy, Tanelli. You kill me. Hold on. Take it easy, Fraser. No need to settle it this way. Okay. Nice shooting, friend. <laughs> He didn't hit you? No, Mr. Jensen. Just knocked the gun out of my hand, which makes him the boss. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Tanelli! Yeah, Harry? I'll keep these guys covered. You go aft and get those two extra anchors. Uh, the heavy ones. Uh, what are you going to do? 
Put him on outside on the deck, Tanelli, along with plenty of rope. Okay, Harry. I'll go get him. Now, look here, Fraser. I know you got us where you want us, but we can make a deal. Yeah, that's what you think. You don't want a couple of murders on your conscience, do you? I'm not particular. Look, look, wait a minute. Let's just say Mr. Jensen here and I don't know a thing. Come on now, put us ashore. Let us get the next boat back to the mainland. We'll forget we ever heard of Cortez. You think I'm a sap? You think I trust you? Why not? Save you a lot of trouble. It won't be much trouble. All I have to do is tie you to a couple of anchors, give you a little shove. That's all there is to it. No trouble. I know it sounds easy. I still think we can make a deal. Oh, quit trying to solve. Tanali, hurry up. Harry, Harry, it's a big boat pulling alongside. What? Yes, right, people. Well, ahoy there. Valentine? Hello. Come on out on deck. Can't make it, I'm afraid. Man in here has a gun on me. You better come aboard. Bring some men with you. Okay, come on, man. Who's that? Just somebody dropping in for a social call. I was afraid for a few minutes they wouldn't get here for the party. Harry, who are they? What do we do now? Shut up, we'll see. All right, you drop the gun. Coast Guard. I said drop the gun. Now, which one of you is Valentine? That'd be the one without the gun, Lieutenant. Me. Okay, where's the stuff you told us about? My friend Fraser here will tell you about that with a little coaxing. He and Captain Tonelli there. Oh, and don't forget a little charge of kidnapping, too. Yeah, nice work, Valentine. All right, you two, let's hear you start to talk. You win, Valentine, but I don't see how you got him here. I'll explain the whole thing on the way back, Fraser. And now, like the lieutenant says, let's talk. Check these figures if you want proof that new RPM motor oil actually doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Even a cab company operating in the tough grind all cabs go through found new RPM added 100% to engine life. A new RPM exceeds the requirements of all automobile manufacturers who now recommend a heavy-duty type of oil. So for top protection under all driving conditions, get new RPM motor oil for your car at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Yeah, Angel? I hate to think what would have happened if this Coast Guard boat hadn't come along to save you. Oh, I knew they'd come, all right. Just hope they'd get there in time. But how did you know they'd come? Remember I told you that radio set in the cave would only send on one frequency? Yes. Well, the one in the boat was a standard job. I found the call book, got on the Coast Guard wavelength. You told and... them where you were. That's right. That's why I had you rip that wire off the outboard motor. Hold them up just long enough. Oh. But it was too close for comfort. George, why don't you give all this up and... We'll settle down. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go aft and settle down for a little fishing. I noticed some tackle back there. Oh, George! Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Booksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Betty Blythe was heard as Alice, Gigi Pearson as Mary, Forrest Lewis as Jensen, Joe Forte as Fraser, Herb Vigran as Cork, and Betty Rubin as Tonelli. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>